Hey guys, bit of a weird one this. I'm actually in the car currently with Nicola. Uh, we're on our way to an Airbnb for, for Saturday night. But anyway, I want to do a very quick video. Um, I want to clip up basically uh, all the reasons to be positive ahead of this season because at the moment looking at Manchester City's social media world and the City Twitter, everyone is so, 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 so negative. Um, I don't think they realise actually there's loads of reasons to currently be positive about this season. Of course there are concerns as well. What I've done here is taken a bit from my big season preview, the reasons to be positive, there's 17 of them, and put them into this video with this intro because I think I'd largely need to separate it from the rest of the video because I think at the moment people need to hear this. Things are a little bit doom and gloomy at the moment but here are 17 reasons to be positive sorry about the uh, the phone intro in the car and all that kind of stuff but i wanted to do this anyway be positive be aggressive, be, uh, be aggressive. <laughs> what's that from uh, it's from bring, uh, some, it, on, like, bring it on or something like that anyway be positive enjoy these 17 reasons and after that video is finished go watch the full big season preview where i've got also if you want to be more pessimistic i've got about 15 reasons to be concerned as well but for now be positive Let's move on to the reasons to be positive, damn it. Let's be positive. Firstly, we're Man fucking City. We're Manchester City. We're fucking brilliant. <laughs> I'm sorry, but he needs sometimes worth saying that we're Manchester City. We're the most successful team in the last decade. We have done things that I never even dreamed were possible in a blue shirt. I never as a child dreamed I would see this level of incredible football, this point totals, these records that we've broken, all this incredible world-class play. I'm sorry, but it's easy to forget with recency bias just how good Manchester City can be on their day. And I'm sorry, we've still got a wonderful, absolutely fucking wonderful collection of players, presuming they turn up. Of course, there's question marks, but why not be positive about it instead? Um, the rivals uh, have signed all these players because they were far behind us. Of course, they're ahead of us currently, but we look around and go, oh, they're signing that, they're signing that, they're signing that. It's because they're trying to chase us. That's why it's happening. And the reason Liverpool are so good right now is because we were so fucking brilliant for two, three years in a row. We made them the level that we are because we were absolutely fantastic. And sometimes it's worth going, actually, you know what? We've got Sergio Aguero, one of the best strikers in Premier League history. Of course, there are injury concerns, but presuming he stays fit, he's the best striker possibly in Premier League history up there with uh, Shearer and Henri. We've got him. We've got Sterling. We scored 30 goals last season for the first time. A Premier uh, League Player of the Year nominee. A Premier, Premier League Young Player of the year winner a guy who could probably score 30 plus goals again this season we've got Bernardo Silva who could rediscover the form that actually made him a Ballon d'Or contender we forget that he was genuinely nominated for a Ballon d'Or uh, Bernardo Silva we've got uh, Rian Mahrez a Premier League player of the year winner you know we've got uh, <laughs> You've got Kevin De Bruyne, the best player in the Premier League and one of the best players in world football. We've got the most exciting young English prospect for 20 years, possibly, in Phil Foden. You know, we got absolutely, I know people say, what about Greenwood and that kind of stuff? Of course, one of them. But we've got Phil Foden there. We've got uh, essentially a fantastic squad with absolutely loads to be positive about. And we've got an incredible style that's already adapted that we actually know loads about. So basically, we're Manchester City Football Club. Why not feel positive? Next up, we've got Ake and Torres, and these are good players. I'm sorry, Nathan Ake is, according to Bournemouth fans, their best player in their club's history. What's not to like about Nathan Ake? I'm sorry, I've got a feeling Ake could surprise us this season. He's versatile, he's hardworking, he's focused, he's got great pace, he's got that never-say-die attitude, and I think, honestly, he will improve us and offer, offer that kind of like alternative that we actually need. Now, Laporte, uh, if Laporte picks up any injuries. Last season, we were definitely hampered by a lack of Laporte, and now we've answered that question. And he's a very, very good player. Uh, I think Ake could be end up being coming a bit of a cult, cult figure, genuinely. I think we could grow to love him loads and admire his determination, his hunger. And I think he'll be better than we realise now. He's surrounded by great players. Also, we've got Ferran Torres. And Ferran Torres is fantastic. I don't think people quite realise how good Ferran Torres is because he put, cost heart barely anything and he didn't come from a big, glamorous club like Real Madrid or something like that. Uh, Ferran Torres is... Uh, <laughs> I'm really, really impressed with Ferran Torres. And not just what he does on the pitch. I like his focus, man. I like his confidence. He's very cocksure. I like the fact that he believes in himself. I like the fact that he clearly wants to show how much of a beast he is with all the videos of him doing weights and all that kind of stuff. And I like the fact that he'll bring a little bit of pace and directness to us. I've got a feeling Ferran Torres could be a bit of a, a surprise package and explode. I mean, he's literally one of Spain's best players in his age group. It's worth remembering that he's seen as one of Spanish, uh, Spain's most brightest prospects. And we got him for around 20 million. Um, Torres is fantastic. I don't doubt that he could be absolutely fantastic for Manchester City this season. Likewise, Nathan Aki. Uh, next up as well, renewed hunger. You know, 
I got a feeling the squad, their pride would have been absolutely battered last season. I got a feeling they'll look around this season and go, do you know what? We can do it this year. They are professionals who are serial winners. And last season, they got so much criticism that I don't see any reason why we won't get a renewed hunger for this squad. It's fair to say that we could question it, but at the same time, it's fair to say, well, why won't it happen? It's very possible. It's very, very possible. They are winners and their pride would have been hurt by last season's uh, deficiencies and the weaknesses. And I think it's fair to say last season, it kind of steamrolled. When he got so far behind, I think it was basically fair to say that the season was written off to an extent in some competitions and that seeped into the season. If we start winning games early on again, that renewed hunger could shine through, especially with Ake and Torres and hopefully someone else coming in. Also, Manchester City have a big squad and you got to bear in mind, this is going to be a very condensed, very tiring season for absolutely every single Premier league season aside sorry and this is one of the things that could actually benefit Manchester City we saw the squad depth earlier and everyone else around the Premier League they can't really match that maybe a couple of teams can maybe Chelsea can maybe you know they've got some good players as well Liverpool in terms of backup but Liverpool don't have the backup that we've got in terms of the front line and all that kind of stuff I'm not saying they will get injuries but the idea that all these squads can cope as well as Manchester City's can when the games can thick and fast doesn't really stand up as well. See, you have a very, very, uh, essentially comfortable squad. We've got a squad that's very much used to our style of play. We've got a squad built for playing every single three days. And not many squads can actually match that. And that's a reason to be very, very positive. Also, the next on the list is, I think it's Bernardo's time to shine. I don't see any reason personally why Bernardo won't actually be better this season than he was last year. There was a lot of rumours last season that he wasn't comfortable shifting from one position to another constantly. And I think Bernardo will actually uh, come back this season with a renewed hunger. I think Bernardo was absolutely incredible in the 18-19 season. I, got, I don't see any reason why he won't be better this year. I think Bernardo... Bernardo is an absolute world-class player on his day. And if he gets that same hunger, that des same desire back... And I think we will get out of him, then Manchester City will be a different proposition altogether. That pressing that he can bring, that desire, that incredible technique, it wasn't always there last season, but maybe this season it will be. He's had a lot of time to think, and I don't see any reason why he can't be the guy. Edison as well. Edison should go up a level. I know he did win the Golden Glove, as I said earlier, but Edison did make some mistakes last season. But I think this season will be a different thing for him. He could easily be a much better Edison this year. We could see him making more saves. He could rise to the challenge that Zach Steffen will actually bring. And I think Steffen will be pushing and training an a lot. So what's to say that Bernardo doesn't improve? What's to say that Edison doesn't improve? Also, this could be a massive year for Gabriel Jesus as well. I've got a feeling Gabriel Jesus could actually shine this year. I think Michael Owen said he could, he could be an outside bet for the Golden Boot. I won't go that far personally, but Gabriel Jesus scored 14 goals in the Premier League last season. And I don't see any reason why he won't get 20 plus as well. I actually think Gabriel Jesus could surprise people. I think you'll get an absolute uh, shit ton of games. I think you'll get a reason to play more because I think, unfortunately, Aguero will pick up some injuries, but this could feed into Gabriel Jesus feeling confident about himself and finally fulfilling the potential that we all know he has got. He has absolutely no lack of work rate. We all admire that part of his game. A lot of people think he's a winger. I think he's fine in either position, but I think Gabriel Jesus will absolutely revel in the responsibility that he'll be afforded this season. He'll get more game time. And I think if he scores a few goals early on, we could see him score a lot more than we realize i think this could be a season where he's getting 25 plus genuinely in all competitions why not of course another reason to be positive is laporte is now fit last season was one where we had laporte injured we had no sarni we had no company of course that hasn't been solved yet uh, but we got torres now in to replace sarni hopefully and laporte is actually back and laporte is absolutely huge for our defense we can't deny the impact that a fit Americ laporte has on this manchester city defense he wasn't at his best towards the end of last season but now given the time he's had, uh, he's had off and everyone's reset and everyone's refocused and all this kind of stuff laporte being around and available that was so, so many of our defensive problems. Last season, we were far too easy to get at. And Laporte being there, linking up with Mendy alongside him, I think with Largy will be a lot more focused and a lot more organised. And Laporte being there will be a big part of that. The next reason as well, I just touched on it briefly, um, Leo Rossani, that saga won't hang over us. I mean, it shouldn't really matter too much in terms of on the pitch, but that kind of stuff, um, it does have an effect. I don't like players, especially senior big international stars, hanging around the first team who don't really want to be there. I mean, Sani was there training every single day. Um, that will have an impact, you know? Like, it'll have an impact a little bit on the focus of the team. We can't have someone that everyone wants to know, everyone knows is doesn't want to be there, hanging around the first team. I'm sorry, I don't like that. And personally, that, that Leroy Sani saga is now over. And that, to me, will be a positive. Another reason to feel positive is actually that I do think we will sign a centre-back. As I'm recording this, of course, it is only Friday the 18th of September. And I do think Manchester City will actually finally get someone in. Um, there's been too many links to too many centre-backs. Uh, Koundé, Jimenez. 
Jimenez, Koulibaly, um, who else? Diego Carlos. That I don't think Manchester City will let up until uh, the transfer window's finished. I think we will sign someone. It's going to be painful uh, in the interim, but I think eventually we'll cave in and throw five, ten million extra at someone like Kulabali, and we will get them in. You've got to trust in Cheeky, Soriano, uh, Pep, and Caldu and everyone to get this over the line, and Omar Baradi, of course, as well. And I think we will get it. So be positive on that front. Next on the list is we've got some incredible youth talents, and they are definitely something to look forward to this season. I'm not saying they'll play loads again games but why not be excited by the likes of Cole Palmer getting a game every now and then or Liam Delap a fantastically gifted bullish complete centre forward or Jaden Braff finally making the breakthrough that all of us hoped would happen or maybe Tommy Doyle a local lad or maybe Howard Bellis if he hangs around will get some game time why not be excited about that these are fantastic young talents that I'm sure we'll see plenty of in the cup games and that is a reason for me to look forward to this season alone because they could one of those could end up being a breakout star this season and I wouldn't be surprised given the amount of games Games, given the amount of injuries, if one of them actually makes a name for himself, and that for me personally is a reason to be excited for this season. Next up, a reason to be positive is a reason to be negative for someone else. Can Liverpool really keep up that pace? I mean, I think we all presume that Liverpool will be exactly the same side next season with absolutely no reason to believe in that. Honestly, I'm sure they'll be very, very good, but. The, the points totals they got next season, I can't see anyone keeping up. I can't see Liverpool keeping up, especially without the Anfield fans to roar them on. Um, I've got a feeling every now and then Liverpool will uh, struggle a little bit. They're going to win loads of games, but I can't see keeping up the pace, even with Thiago, you know. Thiago is good, but he changes what they're about to an extent where I think occasionally Liverpool will pick up injuries, unfortunately, for them. I don't want to wish injuries in anyone, but I think it's inevitable, and I think Liverpool will struggle to maintain that intensity because that hunger's gone from them. Their thing was all about chasing that trophy, that first Premier League title in decades. They finally got there, but now it's done. It's very much like, well, what's the new motivation? Of course, they, to an extent, they will motivate themselves, but there's no guarantee Liverpool will be as good. I think we're all presuming they will be as good and there's no guarantee that's going to be the case. Looking around our rivals as well, there's no guarantee that all those signings for Chelsea will gel. There's no guarantee that Manchester United will keep up that form from post-lockdown. I mean, it's been a frustrating transfer window for them as well. they got Van der Beek, who's a good player, but they so far haven't got Sancho in. They so far haven't got any of the other players that they wanted in as well. And there's no guarantee that Spurs' new signings will uh, gel or Arsenal will be as good as they think they can be. There's no guarantee that anyone will be fantastic because they've all had very different preparations and it's going to be I think we always presume when we see all, the, all these other teams make signs that these players are going to come in and be perfect it doesn't work that way and there's no reason that all these signings that they got will bridge the gap from them to Manchester City we've got to be positive one big thing for me is that I think we could actually see the return of pressing like last season, one of the biggest things that cost us, in my personal opinion, is that we had David Silva playing an awful lot and occasionally Gundogan as well. And David Silva, I think it's fair to say, his legs had gone. And I think we always looked a lot more um, vulnerable for the counter press and uh, teams be basically beat our press an awful lot easier when David Silva was playing. Now David Silva isn't there. We are essentially forced to play Foden or Bernardo a lot more in midfield. It could be Gundogan, of course. But I think we'll see Foden and Bernardo play a lot more in midfield. And I think that will only actually help our game. I think largely City will discover some of that energy again, which marked us out to be such a great team in the 17-18 and 18-19 sides. I genuinely believe that City will be a lot more energetic this season. I think we'll have a, a lot more desire. I think we'll have a more athletic team, presuming Ake plays more, presuming we've got Ferran Torres a lot bit more, and then we've got uh, Nathan Ake coming, and then of course we've got Walker's inevitable lung-busting runs down the right. Cancelo will be adapted a little bit more too. We'll have loads more versatility, loads more pace, loads more energy in our team potentially. Basically, I think we'll see an awful lot of energy in Manchester City side this season that was lacking at times last year, mainly because of the signings and also because of some enforced changes. Next, the player just uh, touched on, Cancelo, Joao Cancelo. I'm expecting an awful lot more of this season from Joao Cancelo. Like as well, Rodri. Rodri and Cancelo adapting, I think, would be a big, big thing. I don't see any reason why Rodri and Cancelo won't be better this season. I think Rodri's seen now for 12 months what the Premier League is all about. I think he will learn a little bit. I think he'll be a lot more Wiley, you'll be familiar with some players and how they play, and once you you can't really plan for something you haven't yet experienced. And Cancelo and Rodri will both be used to that now, but Rodri in particular, I think, will benefit an awful lot. But likewise, Cancelo, I think Cancelo showed towards the end of the season.
season that he finally started to adapt to what Manchester City want from him. And Guardiola was very positive about Cancelo in press conferences, where previously he made some kind of veil comments to suggest that he hadn't fully adapted yet. And Cancelo being good next season and Rodri being a year more to the wise in midfield can only be a good thing. Next one, this is a very Manchester City thing, actually. Weirdly, I think the lack of fans in grounds, I know you could make, oh, say City are already used to it, but weirdly, I think the lack of fans in grounds actually will play into Manchester City's uh, hands. Now, if you go away to Ellen Road or you go to, you know, uh, Sheffield United's ground or you go to Anfield, those fans and that boisterous atmosphere, of course, that will only help those teams. Of course it will. And it'll create a hostile atmosphere that will get the opposition players pumped and ready. And I don't think actually... Um, that will help them. It will be very bad for those teams. City are a team that is clinical, composed and efficient uh, in nature. They aren't a team that needs the crowd's energy to feed off. Of course the fans can make a difference and you've only got to go back to the 2-1 victory against Liverpool at the Etihad for a perfect example of that when the fans were riled and it was intense and passionate and you could tell that they adapted to it. But largely... I think City's style won't be affected by uh, a lack of opposition fans and all that kind of stuff. I think City will be one to benefit from a more sterile, calm, composed training ground environment because our football is methodical, it's focused, it's ready, and I think that will play into City's hands over the course of a season. And the reason to feel positive is like last season, for me, the final one, um, last season was inevitable. It's just cyclical nature of football. Um, sometimes you'll have a season after two incredible seasons that isn't quite as good. And that isn't necessarily always a bad thing. Sometimes you need to reset the focus. Sometimes you need to recoup a little bit and kind of just accept that um, you can't always play at that high level. And maybe you need to miss things and lose things to basically get back to who you are at your very best. And I think that's where we are with Manchester City. And I think last season was just an inevitable part of City, uh, City's next journey, basically. I don't see any reason at all uh, why Manchester City won't recoup, get back together, all these winners will go, let's find our best form, you know, and that is very much a possibility.